All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Delray Beach Chamber of Commerce weekly webinar. Uh, today we have Kim Beckett and Amanda Perna making a special appearance to talk about everything you need to know about Zoom. Um, I would like to let you all know that if you come in late or if you feel that you need to leave early, don't worry because this webinar is going to be uploaded to the Chamber's Facebook page, the YouTube, as well as our website under the tab webinars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kim. And if you have any questions throughout this webinar, please feel free to either enter it in the chat or the Q&A section. Our panelists, as well as myself, can see it. All right, thank you, Angel. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being with us today. I am excited to be able to co-host this webinar with you today to tell you a little bit more about how you can leverage Zoom not only in your professional life, but also in your personal life. With the onset of COVID-19 and the safer at home orders, we've all had to get more flexible with virtual conferencing. In the past, it was all about a phone conference call. Now, the gold standard is that you know how to use Zoom and you know how to make it engaging. Today, we're gonna take some time to show you how to do that in a fun and engaging way. You'll actually get the chance to practice some of the tools so that when you leave this webinar, you'll know more about how to make Zoom work best for you. So a few housekeeping rules. The first thing I want to mention is you want to mute your microphone when you are not talking just to eliminate some of that background noise. And typically, if you're in a Zoom meeting, we would want you to use your video. Today you are in a Zoom webinar, which means your video option is not turned on, and today we'll just be using the microphones. Also, do your best to minimize distractions. Easier said than done, right? You're at home, some of you are homeschooling, you're trying to work at the same time, maybe you're cooking a turkey in the oven, you're multitasking with the best of them. But do your best, try to minimize those distractions, and most importantly, make sure that you participate because we're gonna make it engaging for you. So here's the agenda for today. We're gonna to start off talking about how to present your best virtual self. We all know what it means to get up, take a shower, get dressed, put on makeup if for women, uh, and put on that great outfit and go to a meeting and make an impact. Well, there's some things that you wanna do virtually to present your best self as well. And we're gonna talk about that. Using the engagement tools, whether you're a participant or you're a host of a meeting, you wanna get comfortable using some of the Zoom engagement tools. And we're certainly going to do that for you today. You may have heard about some of the issues with Zoom and security. We've got four tips for you on how you can make your meetings more secure so that you don't have any of those issues. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with four hot tips, which are really some best practices that you can use to make sure you make the most of your Zoom meetings. Now, if you'll take a minute to find your chat button, which should be at the bottom of your screen, and you may have to minimize one screen and open another one if you're on one computer monitor, I'm on two, so if it looks like I'm looking away and up, it's because I have another computer to, computer monitor off to the side. Send us a chat if there's anything else that you would like to see us cover. And Angel, if you would uh, read to me anything that comes through in chat. I'll give you guys just a minute to do that. Do you have any burning questions about Zoom that we can answer for you? Okay, well keep in mind that you can submit those questions throughout and we will have Angel monitoring the chat in case we do have additional questions because this webinar is for you guys. So let's start off with the first topic, which is presenting your best virtual self. And here to give us some tips is our own local fashionista, let's say that three times fast, and now we can even say author of F is for Fashion, our very own darling of Delray, Amanda Perna. So Amanda, 
Tell us what should we wear to these Zoom meetings? I think we okay can you hear me now yes, yes. yay wonderful yay. <laughs> i was like it's saying you have to unmute me okay hi everyone i'm so excited to be here with you guys today um things have definitely changed in a lot of ways but the one thing as kim said is the way that you present yourself is your brand it's you and you want to make sure you're making the right impression we've all seen all of these memes and things of people that aren't wearing pants or are in the restroom while trying to do a zoom call and you want to make sure that does not happen to you so the thing that i love to tell people is you want to think of your meeting as a regular meeting where you are getting up and you're going somewhere so the way that you dress whether you're talking to your friends and family or you are presenting or even attending um, a zoom call is going to be a little bit different um, yes it's true you are only being seen here um, so if you choose to have sweatpants or something on that is your choice but you want to make sure you really do first and foremost look at what your camera is actually seeing um, before you get on any call you'll have a little thing that comes up and it shows you a preview before you actually enter of what the video is and I like to always check that and make sure that you know everything looks as you want it to because the second you hit that button everybody else on the call or meeting is seeing what you're showing um, so the one thing that I really love to think about is what is the story that you are telling? And this goes for in the real world, besides the virtual world, but what is what you're wearing? What is the story that it's telling about you? For me, I always wear bright colors. I'm a fashion designer, so you're not gonna see me in a black business suit ever. Um, it just wouldn't be on brand and it wouldn't make sense for me personally or for my business. Now, if you are a banker or a lawyer, chances are those kind of things are gonna be more appropriate for you. So if you're on a call and you want to, and you're talking and trying to present to a client or with your team what is the purpose of that meeting if the purpose of your meeting is just you know a fun hey let's catch up then it doesn't matter what you wear but if you're trying to sell something you want to look like somebody that you would want to buy from um, so once again the first thing where are you going then once you figured that out okay what do you want to wear is it that you want to have a bright color and show and radiate happiness and you know a little bit of whimsy or is it that you want something a little bit more serious the one thing i love to tell people to is really focus on earrings or a necklace or something like that that you are going to see if you're if you're the person who likes accessories not all everyone loves accessories but it is a fun way to really dress up an outfit that otherwise could have been a little bit more basic and boring um i'm biased obviously i i'm a fashion designer accessories are everything and we make and sell accessories so for me i always make sure i have a pair of earrings on and the reason for that is a it it splashes up my outfit but b it also allows you to see something that I'm selling so since I'm not sitting here saying hey buy earrings from me buy earrings from me but just by wearing those earrings it is giving a nod to that so thinking about all of those things I think is gonna be really important um, Kim, we're getting a lot of questions in here, so we're going to have some fun things to answer in a little bit. Um, the next thing that I really think is important is just how how you're presenting yourself in terms of how you're sitting. And I know Kim has a lot of these things that will be covered later as well, but how are you positioning yourself um, and making sure that that also tells the story that you want? Um, because at the end of the day, if you're slouched over and you know it doesn't really look as professional or as confident as if you're sitting up straight and looking right at the camera when you're speaking. I mean, I'm also like Kim glancing to the side because I have a big screen, so I'm looking this way. Um, but those are the kind of things that are going to be important as as you are going into these zoom calls and really thinking about what everyone's seeing and the last thing is if you I love whoever just wrote Carmela think you cannot go anywhere without earrings I agree completely <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a really fun easy way to step up your outfit um, and even if it is something where you are in a little bit more of a serious role 
everything's a little bit more lax right now. So you can probably get away with those tassel earrings right now, whereas normally in the office, they'd probably look at you like, girl, what are you doing? Right now is the time to break those out because a lot of those barricades and barriers are being a little shifted and lax. You've seen kids run in the room, dogs run in the room as we're trying to eliminate distractions. Sometimes, unfortunately, it's not, it's just not possible. Um, I'm sure if you guys have seen Delray Morning Live, you've seen my dog barking in the background. Uh, my daughter usually doesn't make it at that point because she's taking a nap. But um, yeah, it's, you know, those things are just going to be really important. And then also in terms of <laughs> I love these comments. This is this is my kind of crowd. Very realistic. <laughs> I agree. And that's the next thing is if you are the kind of person who likes to wear makeup, um, focusing on your lips, focusing on things like that because you are so close to each other that we're really looking at each other more than ever. You know, when you're in a meeting setting, you're sitting in a boardroom, you're looking at all the people, all the things. You know, there's a lot to look at. But when you are doing a Zoom call, it's typically going to be one or a few people that you're talking directly to. So you're really studying everybody more than normal so you want to make sure that you feel comfortable confident and that you feel polished because I think at the end of the day it's all about what are you showing and how are you projecting yourself to everyone on your call Amanda those are some great tips thank you so much thank you. Now, Does anyone have questions Well, we can yes. get to questions later. <laughs> yeah. Is is there anything in chat that you wanted to address? Um, thank you for commenting on great tips. I appreciate it. I will be on the on the whole Zoom. So if you have questions towards the end too, you can ask me some questions. Um, I know Kim has some really great other um, topics regarding the visual part of your Zoom call, um, and I can jump in at any point then to you and help you guys in any way that you need. So thank you, and I hope that helps. Absolutely, thank you so much for that, Amanda. We're so glad you were be able to be here with us today. And you're exactly right. You really need to think about your brand and your image as, as we're on these calls. Even though we're at home and we're more casual and relaxed, there's certain things that we can do to make sure we step up our game. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And feel free to send the, the text chats over and Amanda will answer those. So here's the question. Now we can't do it on this call because it's a webinar and video is not enabled, but how do you present your best self as it relates to the webcam? Do you think it's important to actually show your video, yes or no? Now I'm going to show you how to use one of the annotation tools in Zoom so that you can fill in the blanks in these boxes with either a check mark or an X. So here's how we're gonna do that. In just a moment, not yet, but in just a moment, I'm going to turn on the annotation tools and you're going to be able to find the stamp. And with the stamp, you can choose the star, you can choose the check, you can choose any of the things that come up in this particular box. And you can also change the color. You can change your color. It all automatically defaults to a certain color, but you can change that as well by clicking on format. So now I'm going to turn on annotate and you should be, I'm going to turn it off and turn it on because sometimes it doesn't want to work. You should be able to, Angel, are you there? Can you tell them how that, what they'll see on their side of the screen? All right, since I'm not hearing from Angel, I think that uh, what you will see is a green bar and then you've got to look at view options at the bottom, and then you can actually choose annotate. So you should have a green bar now that I've turned on the annotations, view options, and then go to the bottom and you should see annotate. So take a minute to do that and you can actually use your stamp to put a stamp either on the yes side or the no side. Oh, I must have you muted. Didn't know that. Hang on just a second, Angel. There you go, Angel. Sorry about that. Hi, 
I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of you, yes, you do have it at the top. So if you scroll, kind of hover your mouse up to the top of your screen, you should see a little bar that says you are viewing Kim Beckett's screen. It, that's what's showing you what you're seeing. If you look to the right of that, should be a button that says view options or a little black bar in most cases. Hit the drop down arrow. The first couple things you're gonna see are the option to zoom um, your window. And then if you scroll all the way down, you'll see some more options like exit full screen. Um, and then you should see annotate. That annotate button should allow you to um, bring up what Kim's gonna walk you through next. Now, if someone is on uh, their mobile phone for Zoom, you may not have an annotate button. So you have to be on a computer for the most part to be able to see that. I know what you see on the mobile version is very different. I've only been on that a couple of times because I like the full version of Zoom. So um, I'm gonna wait just a second for everyone to find it. Um, Carmen's saying she doesn't see an annotate button either. So let's see here. Turn it off, turn it back on, allow participants to annotate. Got a question. Okay, so I mean, it says you should be able to do it, but you're not able to do it. So let me show you what you would do if you were the host in this situation. So if you're in the host in this situation, you click on share your screen, and that's what I'm sharing. It's just a PowerPoint deck that I have. I click on annotate, and then I also have to make sure I go over to more and click on enable participants annotation. So for whatever reason, it's not working with the webinar, although it should, but we'll keep looking into it. It says it's not, somebody's saying it's not available on their uh, laptop as well. I've been practicing using Zoom and doing the annotation tools in, in uh, some meetings, I'd say over the last four weeks and haven't really had an issue with it. So it may be something to do with webinar, although webinar should be interactive as well. So we'll, we'll check the chamber settings. All right, so this would be a way for you to be interactive where you could ask the, your participants or your team, maybe it's your uh, employees, if you're going to do some type of interactive thing, this is just a PowerPoint slide. And then with annotation tools, they could actually answer that. Now on the next one, you will see, and let me hide this bar so you can see this. Let's talk a little bit about your camera. You're not able to turn your camera on today, but you can see from this screenshot, you've got different people that have different lighting. So when you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, which ones in your opinion have the best lighting? Send us a chat and let us know which ones have the best lighting. Two and three, absolutely. Those, those are the best. Um, if you look at number one, she's got some shadow on her face. She was almost there because she had some light over here, but on the other side, she doesn't. Over here, the lighting could, needs to be just a little bit brighter. And here, because of the way that, that overhead light is, it's casting a shadow, and she looks like she may be kind of, you know, in the dark. And does, you know, it doesn't feel like you're in the dark, but actually, um, you know, once it's on camera, like Amanda said, you really want to pay attention to what you see. So lighting is very important. There are um, some ring lights, LED ring lights, that you can purchase on Amazon for $15, $20 that have little tripods that can sit on your desk, if you're going to be doing a lot of webinars and things like that, and you wanna make sure you have the right image, maybe you're not doing webinars, maybe you're doing sales meetings and those types of things. You wanna make sure that you have that so people can see you clearly. In addition to lighting, this is an example of a, web, uh, a two day class that I attended last week. That's me at the top there. And this is all the participants that were in the class. Something else that's very important is your camera angle. So when you look at everybody, you can notice that some people have better camera angles than others. Obviously, you want to have the camera angle as, you know, if, you're, if you have your laptop and your webcam is at the very top of your laptop, which not all of them are, I don't know why, but they're not. But if it is at the top, you want to make sure you're almost eye level with it. When I look away to look at the other screen, it looks like I'm looking way up because it is a big screen. So that's not ideal. So when you look at these folks, I wanna point out a couple of people that are 
good as far as the um, the lighting goes. So let's let's look at that. So we know on the first row here, my lighting's decent on that day. So I have an overhead light, and then I have light coming in from the side. Um, Robert's light is good. We've got Steve's is good as well. Her lighting's not bad. Her lighting's not bad. So we got a, quite a few people that have good lighting. And then when you start to look at the angles, the worst angle is the up the nose angle. And we've got a little bit of that going on with York. He was from Germany. And, um, you know, you just got to pay attention to this. With Rajit, he was in India. Got a little bit of that up the, the nose angle as well. The best way you can fix that, guys, is put your laptop on a book. If you can't really do that or it doesn't work well for you, then you can buy an external webcam. And I've had uh, people say that they do that as well. So angle is very important. Virginia's angle is just a little bit off. If she could just raise that up a little bit more. And this angle is pretty good. But one of the things that they talked about on this training call that I was on last week, because they did a section on doing sales meetings virtually, is that you want to have a little bit of head space between the top of your head and the, the top of your screen. So what I have live today is actually better than what you see in the screenshot there for me. So you wanna have 10 to 15% space above your head. You don't wanna cut your head off. If you look at Julie here, she's got too much head space. York doesn't have enough head space. I had a little bit too much. So if you look at Steve Ethelson, He's really got the ideal scenario there. It could even come down just a tiny bit. So you want to fill the camera. Again, your image is your brand. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to that before you actually turn the camera on. Um, someone put in chat, a great idea. You can also use a shoe box or something thicker than a book to help with the angling. Uh, absolutely, South Florida Savings Guy, you're, you're right. Um, and then there's some, Amanda said that there's a little ring light that clips right onto your device, and that's a great way to do it as well. I want to mention, because I said it earlier with the Zoom cell phones, um, I've been on some meetings where we've had some people that come on on their cell phones, and that makes the image half the half the size. It's more of a portrait. Now, I guess you could turn your phone. I don't know if, if people are doing that. But that can make a, um, a difference too in what you look like on the camera. So you just wanna pay attention before you actually turn your camera on as to, as to what it looks like. All right, so Zoom virtual backgrounds. This is all the rage. I was in a meeting the other night, and well, last night actually, and it was May 4th, so may the 4th be with you for my Star Wars friends out there. And what we did in that meeting is we actually were all asked before the Zoom meeting to download uh, a virtual background theme to Star Wars. And believe it or not, it was super easy to find. And I did a couple of those. So many people are interested in these virtual backgrounds. Mine is actually a virtual background that I created in Canva, C-A-N-B-A dot com. And I have a paid subscription to Canva where I can make my flyers and business cards and all those kinds of things. And trust me, I'm no genius in that department. So it takes me a few minutes to do these things, but I was able to do it with a template that they had in Canva. Now to do a virtual background in Zoom, you have to have downloaded the Zoom desktop app. Even if you're using the free version of Zoom, you cannot change the virtual background unless you go into your settings on the desktop app. So you can download that for free. And this is a great example. I pulled this off of the Zoom website. If you wanna see what perfect looks like as far as virtual backgrounds, lighting, camera angle, here you go. Now their heads are a little bit higher than was recommended to me last week, but these are perfect. They fill up the whole screen and you can see them, the lighting's good. So that's kind of what we want to aspire to when you think about what do I wanna look like on the camera. And my guess is that some of these may be virtual backgrounds that they're using as well, especially when you've got something that's kind of fuzzy in the background or, or something like that. Here's something that I thought was really cute. This is a group that got together and their job for their Zoom call was to come up with a favorite vacation destination for their background. They were all able to do that. 
those of you out there that are working with your teams virtually, this is a fun thing to do with your teams. Have them think about that, go out, find a background, upload it, and then have each person on the team call talk about that. Have a little bit of fun with your Zoom virtual backgrounds. So here's how you create a virtual background. Basically, the first thing you need is you need an image. There are tons of free Zoom virtual background images. You just have to go to Google, download one, copy one, and, and save it to your images. Make sure you have the Zoom desktop app, as I mentioned, and then you're gonna go into settings, click on the virtual background. I'm gonna show you all this in just a minute. And then you click on the plus sign to add your image. And that's where you go back into your computer, find the image that you saved, click open, and then your image will be in your desktop app and active. So let me show you how to do this. I'm going to close out of my PowerPoint here for just a second. I'm going to go into my Zoom settings. So there's a, when you download the desktop app, this is what it looks like. It says it's paused, so let me get it going again. There you go. This is the desktop app, and then up in the corner, there's a little wheel, very tiny, upper right corner. You wanna click on settings. You wanna go down to virtual background in your settings. And then as you can see, it'll show you what you're showing as your current background. So again, I created this one in Canva. I put my business logo there and I've had a little bit of fun with it. Like last night when we did the Star Wars thing, I had, you know, I looked like I was in the Millennium Falcon. I sound like I'm a Star Wars nut, but I'm not. Um, so that's an example of one. Uh, I was on a library board call the other night and I found this awesome library picture. So I, I made that my background as well. If you have a green screen, which I'm in the process of getting one, a lot of them are on back order, you click here so that the, um, the Zoom knows that you have a true green screen. If you don't have a green screen, that's where you're gonna get the best images with the green screen. If you don't have a green screen, then you don't check that and it's going to ask you to download a plugin so that it can create a virtual green screen for you. Now, if you wanna see what it looks like right now in my office, I've taken down the picture behind me and it's very, uh, you know, there's, there's hardly anything behind me. So I have a yellow wall. It's not ideal. It should be a green wall and that way my virtual background will be better. You can also download some video virtual backgrounds, which I thought was kind of cool. So you've got the beach, you've got the palm tree swaying. Uh, this one was one that was cute, but I, I don't have it as a video, but you can. So that's one of um, an aquarium with the fish moving. My, my suggestion on this is that if you're having a business meeting, you wanna have an office background. Like this is a good office background. Nobody's in there because of social distancing, but this is something that would be much more appropriate for my type of business meeting than maybe some other types of business meetings. This one I thought was really fun. It's called Conference Call Bingo. Um, so again, if I were doing kind of a team call or something like that, I might do something like that. If I had a morning meeting, this is a coffee shop. So you I mean the, the options are uh, limitless. If you're a Tiger King fan, check that out. Let me move over. Oh, that's hilarious. Haven't used that one yet, but I have it ready just in case I need it. So that just gives you an idea of what you're going to do. So again, all you need is the desktop app. Then you're going to do the virtual background. And then here's where you click that plus sign add an image or a video and then that takes you into your computer and then you select the one that you want so i'd save them all to my folder zoom virtual backgrounds i click on it and it automatically changes it so if i don't like that one i'm like oh i'd rather be in the forest i'm going to do that one so that is virtual backgrounds um, some of you may have the virtual option on the bottom of the screen. If you look to the bottom left where the video tab is, click the arrow and the virtual option should be there. Is that Angel? Did you mute again? Yep, you got muted again. Unmute. 
Hello. Yes. Yeah, so if you look to the bottom, um, so like on my computer, I have a Mac and at the bottom of my screen, I have basically a black toolbar uh, where it shows the option for my mic, the option for my video and my chat and so forth. Um, so in the bottom left hand corner, next to the video, there's a little arrow that goes up. It gives you the option to choose a virtual background to do your video settings and my uh, personal favorite. When I click my video settings, it gives you the option to uh, make yourself have a beautiful face, so to speak. It kind of uh, updates everything and um, it says touch up my appearance. Uh <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I do like that. Yeah, you can you can make it um, where it's using making sure you're using your HD camera and all those other things. So let me get out of that. All these windows keep coming up. So again, very easy. Just have your image, make sure you have the desktop app, go to the virtual background in the settings, click on the plus sign, add the image from your computer and you're good to go. And you can change them at any time. If you're doing a business meeting, you wanna make sure that you have that as well. Your microphone, your microphone makes a big difference as well. I remember the guy, can you hear me now? That is something that we're all dealing with, with these uh, virtual meetings. Something that is, that I've recently found out about my computer, I bought this laptop I think a year ago, so it's not even that old, but it's different than the one I had for four years prior, is that I need to make sure that I have this 3.5 millimeter headset jack, not an USB. Because with the USB, it won't work in my laptop. I've done a tiny bit of research. Again, I'm not a techie, but basically I need a sound card and that's above my pay grade to figure out what I need to do there and all those extra tools. So I ordered this one on Amazon. I prefer one ear on the headset and that way I can hear how loud I am. This one actually has volume control and it also has a mute button. So again, the headsets aren't that expensive and it's just another way to make sure that you have the um, best sound quality possible without spending a lot of money. So what do you need to do differently as it relates to your image, projecting your best personal uh, self on the video? What do you think you need to do? Is it your sound? Is it, uh, does it have something to do with, with how you dress? Does it have something to do with your lighting or your camera? Send us a chat on that. What do you need to do differently? Yeah, maybe we need to step up our game with how we're dressing, uh, looking at the backgrounds. You know, if your living room, like Amanda's, that's her real background. That's what her house looks like because she is a fashion designer and obviously I'm not, but you know, hers is beautiful. And there's something to be said. I don't want you to think you have to have a, a, a virtual background. There's something to be said for the personalization of a good, background in your own house. It says something about you, just like when you walk into someone's office and you see their personal photos and you see the books that they've read. So think about those things as well. Susan says, yep, I need to put a book under my laptop uh, to bring it up a little bit. I had to do the same thing. So those are some of the things that you can do that will make a, a difference in how you come across in the video. So checking in, what questions or suggestions do you have about presenting your best virtual self. Send those to us in chat and we'll be happy to answer those. And I'm gonna stop because you guys may have some questions for Amanda here as well. Amanda, while we're waiting for those to come in, do you have any other thoughts or suggestions? I might have to unmute you. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> I was like, oh no, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think those are all great. And I think um, it is really important, like Kim said, lighting. I mean, you want to think about it essentially 
you're curating this video, which is the message that you are projecting to whomever you are interacting with. So everything matters. Everything's part of that brand. So like Kim said, if you're in a meeting where Star Wars is really, you know, a theme, then that's great. Now, if she did that right now, you'd probably think she was nuts. So like anything in life, there's a time and place for everything. And I think it is important to, um, and, and like Kim said here, if your background is messy, use a virtual background. You want to keep the focus on you and on your messaging and the purpose of your call. So as many things that you can eliminate to distract people, the better. I think, um, and I think the little ring light that I was talking to, it clicks, it clips right on your phone, it can clip on your computer, um, and it provides surprisingly a lot of light. I actually learned about this before all of this, back when we were all out in the world, um, from a lot of the blogger friends that I have in terms of taking photos of things. They all kept walking around with this ring light whenever they were taking food pictures, and I was like, what are you doing? But it, it really does make a difference. And I think those things are all really important. And you want to just focus on what background does work for each purpose and what outfit works for, for that particular thing. And if anybody else has any other questions for me, um, please let me know because I'm happy to answer your questions. And I'm here for you. All right. Thank you so much for those tips, Amanda. Looks like we've got a question about the waiting room and having a message in there. Um, that's a great point. And I'll certainly talk to the chamber about having something like that. This is actually not my Zoom account. It's the chamber's Zoom account. But, you know, we're all in this learning together. But Angel, that's a great suggestion that for the waiting room, that we have a message in there that says, you know, thanks for joining the such and such webinar today. We will start shortly just to, to let people know they are in the right spot. So great suggestion, and we'll make sure we do that as well. Okay, today's agenda. So we talked about the presenting your best virtual self. Now let's talk about some of the engagement tools. And unfortunately, we're not able to use them on the webinar, which is ironic, but there are things that you can use with Zoom. And I would encourage you to use them with your family and friends. You know, I had a, Zoom call with my bestie from Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, and we were able to play around and do some things, and it got her comfortable with it as well. This was something that I thought was so cute. This is take your pets to Zoom, and it's like take your kid to work day, take your pet to work day, but you're able to do it virtually. So look at all these beautiful pets. Look at all of these smiling faces. Everybody loves their pet. Even the lady on the second row there that doesn't have a pet, so she's got a stuffed animal that's an elephant, and that's cute too. So, you know, you've even got the family up in the upper right-hand corner. So those are some wonderful things that you can do with Zoom and do that with your team so that people can bond and connect during this, this time when we're all apart. So I did want to show that as a, a great way to engage. So the Zoom tools that are available to us because we've got the chat, we've got the annotation tools. You've also got the ability to do a whiteboard, which is basically you just share your screen, you click on whiteboard and it's a blank white screen. And then people are able just to use that to write on or put check marks or whatever you want them to do. Something else that I learned because I attended a webinar last week uh, or a, a Zoom call last week, was screen sharing, including your iPhone. So you literally, you can plug your iPhone, and there's a way to do it with Androids as well, but I have an iPhone. So you can plug your, your phone into the USB port, do a screen share, and then you have to download some plugin. I always do that for it to work. And then literally, you can share your screen, and I'll do that for you in just a minute. Um, the advanced, things that you can learn how to do are breakout rooms and polling. And breakout rooms are wonderful because that's a great way for you to push people into different rooms so that you have maybe three or four people in a room and then they can all talk to each other, right? And then after five to seven minutes, you pull them back together and then they can present what they discussed. I'm a member of the Florida Speakers Association and the Florida Speakers Association has been doing that. They've been giving us uh, weekly social hours because one of the reasons we're members of the association is to network. And 
when we get on the call, it's for an, an hour's worth of networking. They put us in rooms with three or four other people. We talk about how things are going. We share tips. We talk about webinars we've attended. And then we get a warning, 60 seconds until you know the end of the breakout session. And then we come back and we talk a little bit as a big group. And then they put us in a different breakout room. So by the time you're done, you feel like you've met two or three people, if not more, and that you've made some good connections. Polling has to do with asking questions and having people answer multiple choice, true false. They can do ranking as well. Um, if you have the paid version of Zoom, you can do the polling. I don't have the paid version of Zoom yet. I'm still using the freebie version. And my hack for that is that I found out about something called Poll, P-O-L-L, -L, everywhere. And with Poll everywhere, I can embed it into my PowerPoint. I actually did it for the new member orientation for the chamber a couple of weeks ago, and it was fabulous. So it's a great way to get some interaction and have people answer questions. One of the questions that we had for the chamber was, here are the seven different ways you can promote your business. And the polling question I pushed out there was, rank these in order that are most important. And what was so cool is they used their cell phones. They went to a, a certain URL that was specific to me, and they could see the question that was on the, their laptop screen, and they could also see it on their cell phone, and they could answer it on their cell phone, and it came back through in real time. It was the coolest thing. And it took me a little while to learn how to use it, but not too bad. So it's called Poll Everywhere if you want to learn how to do that. Um, someone said that they're using the, uh, that they were in a um, women's networking, e women networking, and that they're using the breakout rooms in Zoom, and it's fabulous. Carmela, I agree. I, I think it just makes you feel like you really are connecting with people, which is so important right now. You know, play around with breakout rooms. You don't have to have the paid version for that. Play around with that with your friends and family. Now, speaking of friends and family, here are some really fun ideas I found on the internet about what you can do to stay connected with your friends and family. So uh, taking your party in a virtual pub quiz. So, you know, have there's myquiz.com. You could set up quizzes that way host a digital dinner party, tell everybody to cook a certain dish and then all come together and eat it. I love the next one, Bob Ross style paint alongs with your pals. A virtual book club. Um, Sally's done a, a virtual happy hour as well. Absolutely, those are some fun things that you can do. Hey, this is like the ultimate karaoke machine. And then have a, have a board game night. There's a website called Listography that has some information there as well. So if we were making this interactive, what you could do is use your text tool, which is actually how you can write on the screen. And by writing on the screen, you could put a Y or an N in these little, uh, on these lines to see which ones you, you were going to try. Now, engagement tools. Tell us what is important to you. What engagement tools do you enjoy using? I know everybody knows how to use chat. We're comfortable with that. Um, sounds like breakout rooms are a big hit. What are some of the other engagement tools that you like to use or that you plan to use? Post it in chat. And here's the other thing if you're hosting a webinar, you have to get comfortable with a little bit of silence because it takes a while, it could be the internet connection, it could be people finding their screen to get to their chat or to even unmute their phones. Those are the things that you want to allow space and time for people to actually answer your questions. So tell us which engagement tools, I'll scroll, scroll back up to the different ones. Tell us which engagement tools you like. And while we're waiting for you to do that, I'm going to show you how you can go to the cell phone. Okay, so I've turned off my screen share. And I'm going to do a new screen share.
Okay, so with my screen share, when I click on screen share, one of the things that comes up is it says iPhone slash iPad. If I click on share, then it's going to say on your iPhone or iPad, connect to your network, which I have, tap the screen mirroring, which if you've got Apple TV, you know how to do that, and then choose Zoom. So that's what I just did with mine. And again, there's a way to do it with Android. You'll have to, to uh, Google that. But this is, um, this is my phone. So it's thinking for a second because there's a little bit of delay with you being online. And then once it finishes, then you know it'll show the different screens. And when I did this, you have to be patient with it, but when I did this, when I wasn't actually on a webinar, it was actually much faster than this. But just so you know, it can, I'm gonna stop it and start it again. There we go. See if it will do any faster. All right, if you're not seeing people's questions and comments, it means that you don't have your chat window open. So you may wanna go back to the screen, your Zoom screen that has at the bottom chat and click on that. And then you can actually do a little minimize and you can pop that window out and you can see the, the questions and comments and chat that way. All right, if, if you've got it open, then you wanna make sure and look at the top and make sure it says uh, where it says two, that it says all panelists and attendees right here, all panelists and attendees. Because mine did that too, it was on just panelists. So that's probably why you're not seeing it. Okay, so you get the idea on the screen sharing. And if you're gonna use iPhone, and I thought I had a really good connection, but uh, it's, it's going to uh, take quite a bit of bandwidth to do that. So engagement tools, let's go back to that. So hopefully you've seen some ways to do that. The best way to learn how to do these things is to go look at some YouTube videos or look at some things that are on zoom.com. In the webinar that I attended last week, it was a two day class on selling virtually, it was excellent. They talked about if you're in a meeting, I loved this idea because I'm a crazy note taker. To actually share your screen and pull up a blank Word document and in the Word document take your notes so that other people can see them as well and that way you know everybody's on the same page you know what the action items are you know what the key notes are and then after the meeting you can send that out so I thought that was a really great tip just opening up a Word doc and sharing that as well. All right, questions and suggestions before you move on about using Zoom engagement tools. If you wanna use breakout rooms, like I said, I would recommend that you practice that with a couple of friends um, and put them in different breakout rooms. You can pre-assign breakout rooms or you can just let Zoom automatically put people in breakout rooms. So based on how many people you have on the call, then you can say, okay, I want three people per room. You let it know and then boom, you're done. So watch a YouTube video on that or check something out on zoom.com and work and then practice doing the breakout rooms because that's a great way to do it as well. Okay, so we've talked about presenting your best virtual self using some of the engagement tools. The final thing that we wanna mention here is to secure your meetings. You may not have heard um, about Zoom bombing, but it's actually a real thing. And we're gonna talk about what that means. So it was earlier, I guess it was probably late March. What started happening is people were getting links to other people's Zoom accounts and going on to their meetings, taking over the screen, and then actually, um, posting, you know, saying profanity. Um, they were taking over the microphone. They were posting profanity. They were sharing their screen. They were just doing all kinds of rude, rude things. And that became an issue that the FBI considered um, very, very serious. So they called it Zoom bombing. And actually when I Googled it just yesterday, there was a teen that was arrested in Connecticut on April 10th 
for Zoom bombing his high school class. And he was doing many of those ugly things that I just mentioned, and he did get arrested for it. So you wanna be aware of what you can do to prevent that much as possible. Don't use your personal meeting ID. When you set up your Zoom account, you wanna make sure that Zoom comes up with a different ID each time versus it's the same ID each time because once someone grabs that, they could come in on your meeting at any time. Make sure that the waiting room feature is enabled in your settings so that people just can't join the meeting. They have to wait in the waiting room, which means you have to manage it and make sure that you have uh, the, remember to, to let people in. You want to disable the options, the option that allows participants to join before you join because you wanna be the first one to join. You wanna put your participants in the waiting room so that they can't um, come on and hijack your meeting, which is basically what they do. And you wanna disable screen sharing for participants and the remote control function so they don't have the ability to take that over. So here's the remote control function, auto accept all requests, no, 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 because someone could say, give me that. So right now, if you notice, the only people that I can give my keyboard mouse control to is either Amanda or Angel from the chamber. Now, I can also do some things here that, that can uh, make some changes as well, but the best thing I can do has to do with going into my settings, and these are the four things that, that really protect you. So any questions or suggestions for securing your meetings? And it looks like we have a question in the Q&A. Using multiple cameras. Sharon Hogan wants to know if we, has anyone used multiple cameras? I have not used multiple cameras. If anyone's used them, uh, type something. I haven't even seen anybody use mul multiple cameras and I've been on a ton of uh, professional Zoom type calls. Okay, that's probably one we're gonna have to, to, to Google and look up, Sharon. Um, can you tell us more about uh, your reason for wanting to use multiple cameras? Is that for you or for different people? So, hi, Crystal. She said she saw a video about that uh, from Zoom and it was cool because the other camera can see you. So for the instructors. So if you are talking about your speaker view, like, and I don't know if you are, or if you're saying that I would have two cameras in the room with me, um, if I'm leading a, a webinar, that's just one more thing I gotta manage, honestly. You know, I, I would um, be a little concerned about being able to manage that in addition to chat and those other things. And then the, the other thing that you would want to make sure that if you are hosting a meeting with a lot of folks is notice how we've had Angel on the call to and Amanda, they're manning the chat room. You know, I literally can't go through my slides and answer chat at the same time. I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good. So you wanna make sure that you have someone doing that as well. So we've got a question that says, you know, what are some of the differences between Zoom and WebEx and why you would use one over the other? Um, I think it's a personal preference. I don't. I know that WebEx does not have a free version of Zo like Zoom does, so that's some of the reason why you see so many people that go to Zoom first. Um, WebEx starts at I think $10.99 a month. Um, WebEx is more secure, is what I've heard. Although Zoom is has gotten a kick in the pants, and they're trying to up their security on um, on their platform as well. I am a trainer, and so for me, the platform that I'm going to be using to deliver my webinars is not WebEx and it's not Zoom, it's actually called Adobe Connect, and it creates more of a classroom feel but has many of the same features as, as Zoom, but, but at a higher level. It was actually designed for classroom training versus you know just video conferencing. So um, I've used WebEx before when I was a trainer at another company in Atlanta, and um, there's a lot of similar features. I think WebEx may be a little less clunky than Zoom can be. So just you know, kind of keep those things in mind as you're making those comparisons. And you can even do a, a, a Google search 
you know, WebEx versus Zoom and see a couple of blog articles because there's quite a, quite a few things about that as well. All right, so let's move on. The next thing that we want to take a look at is what are the four hot tips? And this is, what are some of those best practices that you wanna take away as a result of being on this call? And we're gonna start with the first one. And I think I need to unmute Amanda. Hang on. Yes, Amanda, tell us about hot tip number one. Oh, am I on? Okay, I think I'm good, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so number one is you are the brand. So remember, everything that the camera and therefore the people on the call see is part of your brand. It's the lighting, it's your appearance in terms of what you're wearing, your cleanliness, and your space. So make sure you really think about everything that people can see because they are seeing this as your brand and therefore your business. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank Hot you. tip number two. If you are hosting a meeting, make sure that you arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. Think about it. If you were going to meet with a client, you would make sure you got there early, you would have some time for small talk and chit chat, and then you would get into the meeting. What's happening a lot of times with these virtual meetings is we think, oh, 10 o'clock, and then we show up at 10 o'clock. Well, certainly as a host, you wanna show up 10 to 15 minutes early. If you have a presentation, you wanna make sure that you've gone through that, and that you have all your settings and your camera angle correct and everything is ready to go. Plus, you wanna show up before your participants or your clients show up. So that's why you wanna arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. If you are a participant, you don't want to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early because they may be trying to go through their pre-call checklist. You wanna make sure you arrive about five minutes early. And then typically in that case, they're either going to let you in five minutes early or they're going to let you in right at the start. So just keep that in mind. Number three, I can't stress enough how important it is to take time to practice, practice, practice. Just when you think you have it down, they throw you a curveball and they change something in the system or it's been three weeks and you haven't done it for a while and it feels clunky, so you just wanna practice. And one of the things that I wanted to mention as it relates to that is that I am a Toastmaster and I've been involved, it's a public speaking club and I've been involved for many years and we had to transition our meetings to virtual meetings. It's been fabulous. We meet on Monday nights from 5.45 to seven and this is a caring, encouraging group that is learning at the same time pace you are in trying to figure things out. So if you fall flat on your face, guess what? We all learned, it's okay. It's the best environment for learning something new like this. You can come as a guest, if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to send you the information on it. And Toastmasters, if you don't know anything about Toastmasters, it is an international organization and it's the cheapest professional development around. It's only $140 a year at that. I think the first year is 140 and then after that, it's like 120 a year every year thereafter, and you pay in six month um, increments. So check out Toastmasters because a lot of the clubs are meeting virtually right now, and that's the best way for you, if you're a member, to practice using the Zoom tools. I mentioned some training resources that Zoom has on their website. Um, I am not, I haven't signed up for any of their webinars, but I've watched a lot of the on-demand um, and I've watched a lot of the Zoom tutorials. So I would love uh, for you to check that stuff out today. There's also great resources on their blog. And then my favorite thing, especially if it's something that you think is complicated like polling or it's complicated like breakout rooms, watch a couple of YouTube videos. There are so many good ones out there that can walk you through how to do those things. And then finally, Amanda, tell us about hot tip number four. Oh, I gotta unmute you again. <laughs> there okay. you go. 
So hot tip number four is check in throughout the meeting. And Kim did an amazing job of this. Just checking in and seeing, does anybody have questions? Is there any tips you have? Because we've learned some things from all of you today too. There's been a lot of great comments that have been happening in the chat and just saying, how is it going for you? Is the pace okay? Because maybe you're nervous and you're, you're going too fast and people can't keep up with you. So making sure that the pace is okay so everyone can keep up. Finding out, are people learning what they want? At the end of the day, time is precious, even when it seems like we have more than ever. Um, but we want to just keep checking in and making sure that people are learning what they want. And is there anything missing? Is there something that you want to learn? And another thing I want to add to, which is not part of the hot tip, but you can also use this to record things that you post later. All of our shows for Delray Morning Live, we have now been doing mm. through Zoom. So normally we film at Capital One Cafe, we have an audience, everyone gets coffee, it's a really lovely experience, and we didn't wanna stop doing that. So it's one thing that we've, we've transitioned also into filming through Zoom. We have our guests on with Zoom, so everyone's safe, socially distanced, but we can still keep providing you the content that you're expecting on Wednesdays. So that's just another little tip I wanted to add. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. And, and, you know, there's so many great things. I think that Zoom will also, uh, when you record your meeting, it will it'll capture it. I think it'll do the dictation of it as well. So that's pretty cool. And again, there's a lot of features that most of us don't use. So it's good to know about those things. So thanks for bringing that up. Any other hot tips that you guys want to share? Enter those in chat for us. I see Michael's got an issue with his headset and the Zoom app. It works on the computer, his headset does, with every app, but not on Zoom. Um, Michael, the, the only suggestion I have is to start off with maybe downloading the most recent version of the Zoom app, which came out, I think, within the last couple of days. It's Zoom app 5.0. Maybe they've updated and upgraded that. Um, I couldn't get my USB port to work with my headset either. That's why I ordered one that had the 3.5 millimeter plug-in that's going to plug right into my laptop and use my uh, sound and, and microphone you know, port. That may be uh, some of the issue, but hopefully they're aware of it and, and trying to address it. And I'll try to Google it and see what I come up with for you as well. All right, so here's your to-do list. Your to-do list is take a Zoom training class. You know, dive in, learn something about Zoom that you didn't know. Update your advanced settings, including your security and maybe even creating a virtual background. Just make sure it's business appropriate if that's what it needs to be. And then schedule a Zoom meeting with your friends and family and then your employees and clients. Practice on your friends and family. Join us at Delray Newsmakers Toastmasters next Monday. You'll be, you'll be happy that you did. But I assure you that if you do these things, and you do them consistently, you're going to get more comfortable with the platform, you're going to get more comfortable making those connections with your client and your employees. So hopefully that gave you some information that you can use to learn more about using Zoom in your business and also using Zoom in your personal life to connect and collaborate with others. So thanks so much for being on the webinar. And with that, Angel, I'll turn it back over to you and I'll unmute you. You're unmuted. Hi, everyone. <laughs> thank you, Kim, and thank you, Amanda, for joining us um, and teaching us in this webinar. Uh, Zoom, while it can be a little bit frustrating, it is also an amazing tool um, that I think after all of this, we are all gonna wanna utilize it more. Um, so this was very informative and I think we could almost do a training on every single tab in the Zoom <laughs> portion. Uh, but like Kim mentioned, if there's something particular that you really need to train yourself on, YouTube is a great resource um, to go and, and look at. Um, so thank you again for joining us. Uh, I would like to invite you all to join us back next Tuesday uh, for our webinar on bankruptcy. Everything you need to know and are afraid to ask. Ron Kanyak will be here Tuesday at 12.30, May 12th, and he will be here to give you um, a nice little presentation as well as answer any questions you may have. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give us a minute or two, just if anybody else has any last questions um, that you might wanna ask before we exit out. Uh, I just wanna remind everybody that we will have this uploaded to the Chamber website under webinars tab, as well as to our YouTube and our Facebook. Awesome. Thank you so much, Angel. And thank you all for being here today. And we'll keep the chat open for a few minutes in case you have any other questions. All righty. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and close this out. Um, thank you again, Kim. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you for everybody who joined us. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>